Yeah. All right, I would like to call the meeting to order, please. Um, I would take a motion to approve the January agenda. I make a motion to approve the January agenda. Do I have a second? I will second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, moving on, I know we're going to get Nina joining us. So Nina's um, here now. <laughs> there she is. Great. Um, Peter? Yes. Uh, can I say something? Certainly. Um, I'm going to be taking the minutes today. Yes. Um, so I would, sometimes I have a problem hearing on this Zoom setup. So I would appreciate, I may have to ask you to repeat things. Um, so if everyone can enunciate and um, have a little patience as I hit my stride here with taking these minutes. Not, not a problem, Dale, and thank you so much. Um, I think this is recorded as well. So if there are problems, it, you can always, I know you would prefer not to have to go back through a long recording. Hopefully it's not that long today. <laughs> no, I can do that. And I will do that, obviously, because I'm not going to remember everything. But it helps me particularly to be able to get the motions as we're making them and, you know, that kind of thing. So just, no yeah, the, just. Hey, Dale, the administrative yeah. assistant did just wait until the recording was up uh, to take the minutes. So and how long does that take? We, I can get them to you today. Yeah, okay, so that's better because the sooner the better you remember more, you yeah. know, and, anyway. And, and yeah. with the recording, that allows you to participate better. <laughs> right, thank you so much. Thank you, Dale. Um, <clears throat> the next order of business on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of December 16th, 2001 regular board meeting. I will move to approve the minutes from the December 16th board meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Do I have any discussion? Any changes? Hearing nothing, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Thank you. Um, I'd like to open this up for public comment. Are there any public comments? I, uh, I see we have, uh, I think one person online we have quite a few <laughs> oh i i sorry i don't see i i my screen is limited so if, oh if it's me i'm here uh because uh i'm filling in for Lori on the friends of the library board not, just not observing a, not a problem not a problem thank you Robert. they're representative bob <laughs> <laughs> you're not just observing you're representing them if, if somebody has a question for the board or a comment, would you please uh, use the Zoom, wave your hand to ask? Kip, are you seeing anything? I'm not seeing any hands. All right, hearing none, uh, let's move on. Uh, correspondence report, we did not have any correspondence to my knowledge. Nope, there is none this month. All right, consent agenda, does anyone, Anyone want to pull something from the consent agenda? Dale? Yes, Peter, I have a couple of questions about the financials. All right, we'll pull the financials. Anybody else? I have questions also. Pull from the consent agenda. Okay, uh, let's pull the financials. Dale? Yes, I. Um, when I'm looking at Kip, I guess I'll direct this to you. Or is Stella there? I didn't Stella know. Stella is online as well. Okay, good. Well, but either of you. Um, when I'm looking at the year to date, it looks like our staff and board development is pretty much used up. Now, yeah. I know we have some other alternatives, um, but it looks like we're pretty tight there. I mean, we're basically done. Yes, and, and Stella and I have looked at that budget line, it seems to be that it's always under budgeted and overspent uh, for, for several years now. Um, yes. So when we prepare next year's budget, we do plan on budgeting a, a more realistic amount. Um, it could be that this year Deb put in 
a small amount because of COVID, thinking no one would be going anywhere or whatever. Um, but if we look back at previous years, it's generally in that 5,000 range, and we tend to spend about 15,000 on training and staff development. Um, so so we'll, we'll budget something more realistic in the future. And I know that um, I hate for us to miss any opportunities. Um, and I know that in the past we have talked to the foundation about that, which I'm assuming is still an option for us. I would imagine so. Um, um, Kip, could, could, you, could you explain what other resources you're using for known expenditures coming up? For example, we have a couple of training uh, training sessions I know that are coming up. How are you funding those? The upcoming training session that we will talk about later is I'm using my director's discretionary or uh, a fund from the foundation to cover that training expense. Um, the In my report, you will see that a number of staff are attending the Public Library Association conference in Portland in March. Uh, and we have looked at um, the budget, um, we will have enough remaining in salaries this year that we can uh, do a budget adjustment to cover um, the expenses of going to PLA. Okay. Um, I had another question, Peter, if I may. Please, this is, um, you pulled it, so that's fine. I'm, I'm wondering about our uh, federal money from the state library. And I wasn't sure exactly how we were going to get that. I know there was some discussion that they were going to apply some of it to our database expenses. So I just wasn't sure if any of that had happened or if there had been a decision made at their level about how that was going to happen. The state has set aside $30,000 approximately for uh, overdrive expenses. So um, the collection team is continuing to select over the course of the year to spend that money down. And we, we've spent more than half of that at this point. Um, the state is also, we just received an email, I believe maybe Friday, um, telling us that they had reimbursed uh, us for a little over $12,000 for our uh, network fees, our wild fees. Good. Thank you. And that's all that we know that's for sure coming from the state right now. There is potential uh, other funds coming, but we have no confirmation of that yet. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, do any of the other board members have a question about the finances? Grace does. All right, Grace. I do, please. Thank you. Um, this is probably to Kip. Um, Kip, the program's budget, hardly anything's been spent there in the program's budget. And I'm, I just don't want to just assume, is that because of staffing issues and COVID that you haven't had as many programs going on or um, we're still doing some programs. We're doing a lot of programming. Um, most of the programming is funded through the foundation. Um, so um, any of the, there are some things that we just aren't doing because of COVID still, like after school programming um, and things like that. But uh, we're certainly, I would say Maggie knows we're spending money on programs. <laughs> Okay, I, I knew that programs were going on. And so this is just an additional budget to what the, and so you've been drawing from the foundation to date. Yeah. yeah. And then in general, it looks like we're going to have possibly a, an underrun of some significance for this year, or is that, I, am I seeing that right? I would say certainly in terms of salaries, there'll be a, a big underrun because of all the vacancies um, and attrition that's happened. So Mark. I'd like to talk about the openings later on in the director's report and staff report, please. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sean, are you okay with the financials? Do you have any questions? Uh, no questions at this time. 
Nina, you all right? Okay. Um, I would take a motion to approve then the consent agenda for January, 2021. Do I have a motion? I'll move. How about a second, please? I'll say, Grace will second. Thank you. All in favor? Any discuss, excuse me, any discussion? All in favor? Say aye. 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 Thank you. Any opposed? Okay, director's report. Sure. Um, it was rather lengthy this month. Um, January, um, per the calendar, the board calendar should include some annual statistics. So the state report um, has not been opened and for, for input yet. So I don't have a full state report to share with you this month. Um, so I've included some of the more important stats. So there's some at the beginning of the report and then uh, the normal digital uh, stats are later on in the report. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Um, otherwise, there are two important things in the staff in my staff report. Um, the Library Housing Task Force. Last month, the board asked that um, Maggie and I sort of figure out how to reconstitute the library's housing task force. And so we met last week and discussed how, how that committee should look uh, this time around. And so you'll see in the report that um, we've reduced the membership um, from the last time we had a housing task force, um, mainly in the staff side of things. Um, so uh, I'm Maggie and I are recommending that um, the new task force be comprised of me, uh, the director, the foundation executive director, um, or Maggie, I'm not sure if we haven't decided since Diana is not on board at the foundation yet. Um, also a possible uh, executive board member of the foundation. Um, I believe Maggie will be asking that at her next meeting. Um, and then one library board member, um, we'll leave that up to whether Nina wants to say yes. <laughs> um, and then uh, up to three staff, we were thinking two or three staff members, depending on interest. Uh, last time there were five staff and I think you're just sort of gonna get a lot of the same um, information from two or three versus five. So that's the composition of the task force. And then we discussed what the purpose of the task force, what they might focus on. Um, and we thought it was important to look at the current support um, that the foundation is providing and evaluate the effectiveness of that. And should it continue, make a recommendation, should it be expanded? Um, also just look at uh, the biggest housing need that's currently facing library staff. It possibly has changed from when we did the survey, um, given that housing is sort of a, a tenuous thing. Um, the needs change from almost day to day. Uh, so we want them to focus on that. Um, and then also just become aware, work with other organizations that are looking at housing. There have been two fairly significant meetings in the last week or two uh, that have discussed housing. So trying to catch, get caught up on that. And then I think they need to sort of maybe just jump in with some spec votes coming up this year, possibly look at what the options might be for the library parking lot and what that might look like. Um, I know there's a lot of ideas out there. Um, so we would like the task force to sort of tackle that, I guess, and, and figure out are there possibilities for a development of that space? So that's what we're proposing. Um, you'll find in your packet a couple of articles that Maggie had found about how the hospital and Parks and Rec have developed housing for their employees. Um, and that's something very useful and the task force will wanna read those too. If I have uh, a couple of questions for you about this portion of that. Sure. Um, 
I guess one question and one um, request, uh, if the rest of the board agrees with me. Uh, the one is, what is your time frame? Um, one of the things that uh, on on meeting, because one of the things that I think we've done a lot is a lot of talking over lots of years, and um, I'm concerned about if we are trying to do something such as getting sketch plans for potential construction and so forth with a SPET um, uh, potential for this calendar year, that's something that we probably should have started, you know, a while back. Yes. So could you, do you have a time frame for meeting? And uh, I presume it's going to be fairly intensive. It would have to be if that, knowing the timeline for the SPET votes this year, uh, we would certainly have to expedite our work. Um, I would put a call out for staff membership this afternoon once the board has put their stamp of approval on this. So we would start work as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, um, secondly, I would request, and I, and I would love my fellow board members' uh, views, that because of the nature of this task force, that we have a fairly succinct charter so that we understand in you know, one paragraph where the, where the guardrails are on what you are and are not doing. I think that would be very helpful just as a discipline. For sure. And I think that would be something the task force could put together really okay. quickly. I mean, we would need to. Super. Um, that, those are my two, well, well one statement and one, uh, <laughs> one question. <laughs> um, so uh, let, let's open it up to the board. Um, the issue at hand, and I'm sorry to pull this out, uh, but I just, uh, I think we should have some, a little discussion of your, of your suggestion. Do you wanna do this now about the task force or do you wanna wait until the end of your report? Um, might as well do it now since we're in, into it. <laughs> What's the sentiment of the board on, uh, on having this task force come together involving one of our members? Okay, I'm gonna call you out. Dale, what do you think? Well, I'd hate to see them do it without us. <laughs> so yeah, right. <laughs> so I, I think, yes, we should definitely have some representation. Um, I'm fine with what Kip is suggesting here as a starting point recognizing that the committee may, you know, change it a little bit as they go along. But no, I think it's a good place to start. Okay. Sean, are you okay with this? I am. I agree as well. And, and you know, the idea of uh, pushing with some haste uh, doesn't seem unreasonable either, to be honest. Right. Grace? Um, I, I'm in agreement. And the only... Um, uh, additional concept that might already be considered is we need to make sure that that task force in at some level stays involved with the county task force you know we had that was it April came in and reported to us a few yeah. months ago mm -hmm. and I, I sure would like for them to be aware of what we're doing mm -hmm. and of course to um, so that's all I'd ask otherwise I'm fine with it Nina, your name's been banded around. How do you feel about all of this? Uh, I feel great about all of it. I would, my, the only thing I would be interested in adding to the purpose is an evaluation of, um, of just including the term um, recruitment in there in some way, because I do, from what I've heard, and I could be wrong, there's been, issues with recruitment like the youth services manager was a tough position to fill because of housing so being able to bring in people from outside of this community I think it's just worthy of including at least that word or potential employees as well as just what's affecting the current employees I'm happy to be on the tax force I won't make Peter 
put, <laughs> put me on there. <laughs> I wow, guess. <laughs> that's, I, I don't have to beg. That's good. That was kind, Lynn. <laughs> Nina. That was kind. <laughs> thank, thank you. Um, so, with all due respect to the rest of your your, with other questions that may come up on your director's report, unless can, someone else wants to be, I don't want to take it away from anybody. But it sounds like I felt like I, there was a road, and I should get on it. So I, I did that. <laughs> It's, I'm reading it that wrong, like you let were, me know. It sounded like you were asleep in the passenger side and everybody <laughs> stopped on the road and put you into the driver's seat. Yeah, it's fine. Um, so uh, not meaning to interrupt the flow of your director's report, but let's just, why don't we conclude this portion of your director's report. Um, uh, I will make a motion that the library board establish a library housing task force as proposed and have Nina be the representative from the board on that task force. Do I have a second to that motion? Second. Thank you, Dale. Do I have any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, Nina, very much. Thank you, Maggie and, and Kip. Um, Please uh, keep, keep going on your director's report. I know you had another point. One other thing on this director's report is a staffing update. Um, we started anew with recruitment uh, at the beginning of the month, having taken somewhat of a break, trying to just give our ads a, a break from the newspaper um, and allow for the holidays to pass. So we've now posted four positions um, as open. We have a number of applicants for the senior library assistant positions. Uh, there is interest in both the youth and the adult positions, and we are in the process of scheduling interviews for those. So I am hopeful we have internal candidates as well that have applied for those positions. Um, so, uh, that, that's promising that we have some interest in staff growth. Um, the IT technician position is open for the first time uh, since we've um, restructured how IT functions here. And we have a number of applicants for that position as well. Um, Nina, to your point, um, housing, they're, they're all applicants from outside the area. <laughs> And we've had some people who have in their application materials specifically noted that they are aware of the housing situation or they have a housing option available to them. Um, that's not the case with the IT tech position. So yes, housing is a problem <laughs> for recruitment. Um, and then <clears throat> the part-time library assistant position sort of an ongoing recruitment. Uh, we did successfully hire a new person, Tara May, who started this, I believe last week actually. Um, so if you see a new face in the library, introduce yourself. Um, and then the administrative assistant position, Dale, you'll probably be secretary in February. <laughs> uh, it, it, we've yet to receive a single applicant for that position. Um, and my understanding is that's sort of where we stand in, with regard to that in county positions. Heather Overholzer over in Public Works has also been recruiting an admin assistant for a number of months with no applicants. So if you know anyone, please, <laughs> uh, we, we, uh, we would love to <laughs> at least have an interview. I, I have a question about that, if I might. Yes. Um, it strikes me that the uh, message that you've been delivering on this particular position has been consistent and is a struggle throughout the departments in the county. Um, is there any talk about looking at that particular job classification within HR in the county because all of the departments are having trouble with it? to look at reclassifying the salary bracket? I 
can't answer for countywide discussion around that. I know that HR and Alyssa Watkins and I have had a discussion about the job description for the admin assistant and it it what we're how we've classed it is in line with the market. Um, that said, there there obviously is a problem with recruitment for this type of position. <laughs> um, and so I don't know where we go from there. Parks and Rec has still have a has an issue and they've had a posting for over a year, have they not? I don't know the answer to that. I, th I thought that was what we heard at, at a past. I think Mark is putting thumbs up. Yeah, that's the case. Okay. Um, my second question is, if you move internal candidates into filling some of your open positions, how difficult it is, is it, will it be to fill their place? I, it, it, thankfully, the applicants, the internal applicants are the part-time library assistants, which is for whatever reason, somewhat easier for us to fill. Um, maybe people are looking for a second job um, when they're looking for that position. Um, but that's the one position that we've sort of been consistent in being able to somewhat fill. <laughs> Thank you. And that's it for my director's report. I, I would just like to add on the administrative assistant. We have been uh, this is really bogging Kip down, not having an administrative assistant. The library is struggling because of it and going into strategic planning. Um, we are absolutely going to need administrative assistant kind of work. Um, is it time to step back and, and look at, is there a different way to do this? Maybe hire administrative assistants for special tasks or I I feel like we're we're asking for different results and not doing anything to change the the story so is we, it time to brainstorm or what can we do there to get past this it may be <laughs> um, we were hoping that with it, the position has been reclassified it has gone from a grade 20 to a grade 22. Uh, so a fairly significant bump in salary. So we kind of thought we might see interest this time around. Um, we're only two, two and a half weeks into the year. So maybe people are not looking yet, but I think if we're not seeing applicants in the next couple of weeks or so, we do need to have that kind of conversation, Grace. Um, yeah, it needs to be a brainstorm, figure out what can we do differently to to accomplish the work. I, I would like to just do a shout out to other county departments. Um, when the need has arisen, they have been there to step up and offer assistance, advice, help. Um, so the, the, there's a lot of goodwill out there for, for what we're doing. And uh, we, Stella and I certainly appreciate the help that others other departments are providing us right now. Are there any other questions for Kip on his director's report? Um, one quick question. Sure. Uh, Kip, you talk about you're going to be on the um, Wyoming Library Association's legislative committee. Yes. What does that mean? <clears throat> it means that the members of this committee monitor all the proposed legislation that's going before the uh, state legislature this year and monitoring it to see if there's anything that impacts public libraries. Thank you. Uh, Kip, I just wanted to compliment you on the statistics. I really, it was a very, it was a job well done. It was good to see. Uh, and I like the format. It's very helpful. Um, so the, I know there were, it looked like there were several hands involved. In, in I was going to say, I will share that accolade with, uh, staff, uh, Angela yeah. particularly put a lot of this together, uh, it, for me. It was very well done. Yeah. Um, have you heard, uh, have, has the state opened up their, uh, statistics reporting yet? Not that I'm aware of, not the last time I checked. So that's on my 
calendar once we get past this meeting to find out when it will be. We're, we're working on getting past this meeting. <laughs> and when we get the state's uh, data, will that let us see national trends as to it what's does, happening in libraries? I'm, it I'm does missing not. that aspect. It does not. It, we would have to do a literature search for the board, and I'd be happy to do that. Um, so, Kip, in the past, we had a very comprehensive statistical package that might be a good place to look to start to see how we compared nationally. Um, I'll dig that up and drop it off on your desk. Okay. <laughs> just, just a starting point. Okay. okay. Thank you, Grace. Any other questions for Kip? Thanks, Kip. Uh, let's move on to the foundation report, Maggie. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Maggie Schilling with the Library Foundation. And I just want to start off by thanking you all for the opportunity to work more closely with you over the past six months. Um, as I've been filling in as the director here of the foundation, as you all may know, our new director, uh, Diana Peck, starts January 31st. She picked the Monday instead of Tuesday, February 1st. So she'll be in the office starting January 31st. So at your next board meeting in February, you will get to hear from Diana instead of me, and I will probably get to go back to listening. <laughs> um, just to kind of fill you in on what the foundation is up to, we had our committee meetings yesterday. We have our board meeting next Wednesday for January. And we did discuss with our executive committee the housing task force proposal in general. Um, they're very supportive of the task force and of being part of it. They appreciate the invitation um, to be part of it and look forward to working with the library, you know, to help really define the need, like what is the need that the library is facing. Um, you know, on the last round with the task force, it was narrowed down to really more of a short-term type need. So the foundation created the housing support fund and then also purchased the lease over at Redmond Hall to serve as a temporary kind of landing pad. So that was sort of where we went last time. And so we'll see what, you know, the task force decides is really the need this time. Um, so they talked about that. Since our the last meeting in December, what have we been focused on? Um, we've completed our year-end appeal. So thank you all to any of you who gave. We appreciate the community's support um, for that. We also, um, really our biggest kind of effort of late has been revamping our financial procedures given the shift of the library's accounts um, over to the county. Um, I think in the financial report, it alluded to the fact that that has necessitated um, a lot of the foundation expenditures coming back into our office. So we will be paying for foundation funded expenses directly again. So I have um, taken out a bunch of credit cards to give to the library spenders um, that work with us. So those arrived just yesterday um, and I'll look forward to getting those out to everybody so they can start spending. Um, we also were working, enjoying working with Kip on the coming budget for fiscal year 22-23. We met with all the spenders and have done some revisions to our budget process. Um, I think we'll be really good. Our committees yesterday appreciated seeing that work. So we'll look forward to seeing how that all plays out this spring. Um, and then really our final thing that we'll be working on is our annual report um, where we take the opportunity to thank all of our donors from last year. So that will be coming up. Um, Diana will have a full plate right out of the gate. So happy to take any questions, but thank you all again. It's been a pleasure. Staying around though, Maggie. Oh yeah, no, I'm going back to being assistant director. So I'll be in the office and helping out and you know, you'll probably still see my name on the screen. Maybe just not my face. How about that? <laughs> Well, Maggie, I want to thank you for all of the effort that you've done. And it's been fantastic over the last few months when you've, it was very smooth. And um, so thank you. And I, uh, uh, I appreciate all this good work that you're doing to set up um, a successful transition. I'll put it that way. Are there, any, are there, any, questions? Is, are there any questions for Maggie? Thank you, Maggie. Um, Friends report, Bob. Uh, we um, uh, did um, a thank you notes for the staff. Um, 
in other, and uh, we're having a board meeting soon. And the, nook, the book nook is still going good in front of the library or um, the uh, little free libraries are going on okay. And I didn't really know I had to talk. So <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Well, Bob, are you, uh, Virginia has been doing a, a phenomenal job of recruiting, if I uh, have heard right, correctly. Is that correct? Yeah, I, we have uh, two or three new people, uh, starting with the meeting that we're having next week. Terrific. Well, that's great. And um, I presume you're always open for more people who are interested in being either volunteers or or on the or on the board of the friends yes definitely thank you very much are there any other questions for the friends i'd just like to add that we did in in vita on the tax program we brought um seven and probably eight new volunteers into the library system to work the tax program. And that's many thanks to Joe and, and lots of efforts from all, but that's fresh blood coming into our, <laughs> our system. So that's a positive thing. As long as they don't have to give it. All right, thank you very much. Um, let's move on to the physical year 23 budget development. Um, the first item is the capital improvement projects and the CIP work uh, workbook. Kip, do you want to lead us in that discussion and ha or have Rick? Um, well, I'll start and just say that um, we have a number of projects that we would like to undertake in the next fiscal year. Um, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight projects um, that are truly um, building improvements or building repairs or maintenance um, that total about $98,500. Um, those include rebuilding our outdoor trash enclosure um, that currently is, um, in sort of a state of disrepair, not disrepair, but it, it's difficult to use. Um, it doesn't have a roof over it, so uh, snow removal is difficult. Um, and so we would like to um, improve the outdoor enclosure. Um, we would like to, uh, per the Bureau Veritas uh, facility assessment, um, the solar power inverters on the roof are at the end of their life um, within a year or so. And so we would like to replace those. Um, there's fire suppression uh, backflow preventer replacement that needs to happen. Um, and then there's a few things at Alta that need to be undertaken. Uh, the north wall at exterior wall at Alta is um, just sort of rotting, I guess, uh, would be the short way to describe it and needs to be replaced. Um, when we did the Bureau Veritas facility assessment for this facility, we did not include Alta for some reason. Um, so we would like to also do uh, have BV do the assessment on that facility as well. And those are the main projects that are, are definitely um, fun uh, projects that we would want to use um, our reserve fund for. Um, there are three or four other projects that fall outside of the current definition of what our reserve fund is for. Um, one of those is a storage, um, we would like to place a storage shed on site that would allow us to save the $450 a month we're paying in uh, storage facility fees. Um, the um, circulation room here at the library was designed to have an automated materials handling system in it 
um, that would automatically uh, check in and sort uh, library items when they come back, um, which would allow for the staff that are currently doing that to be more front facing to provide customer service. It would also help with our inability to sometimes recruit part time folks. Um, so it would it would expedite our our materials handling services here. And then the other item is a people counting system. We currently have a door counter that is questionable in how it records the data. Uh, we would like to have a system that records um, the data on an hourly basis so that we can better understand when people are using the library and when they're not. Um, so that's a quick overview of the projects. I think there's a question that um, the board needs to have is about our reserve fund. Um, what is the real definition of that? Can we use that reserve fund for these other projects? Do we need to go uh, include those other projects in our budget and take those before the county commissioners and seek their uh, approval for that funding? Um, we currently have about $1.45 million in reserve fund. And so those are some of the questions. Kip, uh, could you um, help us understand what direction you're getting from the county in terms of uh, either state funds that are coming in that are additional or county funds for the regular, what I'll call what we normally would do in terms of, of um, when they're applying for grants uh, with the state, are, are some of these subject to being able to be funded through this grant seeking process that the county has, in, has uh, started? My understanding is that the solar converters might be um, able to be funded through the, and I forget what the program is called, EMP, I believe, um, Energy Mitigation Program. Um, and my understanding is there's a lot of funding in that, and we might be able to use access those funds for that project. Um, the automated handling materials handling system, there is some funding that's coming from this, possibly it, it's less, I, I'm less confident in it coming um, than I was in December. But supposedly there was about a thousand dollar or a hundred thousand dollars that would be coming directly to every public library in the state that could be used um, for technology. And so I don't know the specific definition of technology uh, and whether or not this project would fall under that or not. But if so, that would be a good place to put that $100,000. Otherwise, I'm not aware. Um, you'll see in the draft budget guidance from the commissioners, um, their ranking of how CIP projects might be funded. And some of ours would be further down on the priority list. Well, I guess to address your the issue that you raised, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to step on any other board member that may want to ask a question. I should actually open it up to anybody else first. Um, sorry. Uh, Dale, Sean, uh, uh, Grace, or Nina, do you have questions about or, or views on what Kip's presented on the CIP workbook? Dale? Dale. Um, I would just... Um like to share a little bit of history um, and urge um, caution, I guess, about particularly at this juncture when we are getting ready, hopefully, to have an expedited serious effort towards housing that we are very careful about what we put in our parking lot or on our grounds. Um, and I can tell you in the past, we never put anything out there, storage sheds, garbage sheds, that we didn't move it. <laughs> and this was before a big effort to, you know, hopefully do something about our housing. So 
Um, I realize some of it is not optimum, but um, but just since we're, we're hopefully facing some change that we might want to, you know, just keep that in the back of our minds in terms of some of that. Um, when we did the solar, we did write a lot of grants and we were very successful with those at the time. I'm not familiar with the climate out there right now for um, for these kinds of grants, but um, we got a number of state as well as local grants to help us with that. So I'm glad you're looking at that, Kip. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, to, to your point about the storage shed or the garbage enclosure, um, the storage shed um, would be an asset. It would be able to be used and say until the parking lot might be developed. Um, I think that would be something we could ask to have incorporated into the uh, any building that might get built would be storage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so the asset could be sold. Um, it, it certainly wouldn't be something that we would be stuck with. Um, it's just more work. You know, it's just more work in terms of, you know, somebody having to deal with it. And that's all I'm thinking about yeah. because yeah. I know people are, you know, doing everything they can right now the a storage shed versus the continued rental of the storage unit um the a shed would pay for itself in about a year um and so we would save in the long run yeah. and it's not likely that a anything's going to get built on the parking lot within the next five years probably don't say that <laughs> there's a lot of a lot of planning and permitting and uh, it gets complicated when you start putting in a parking garage as part of it. So the, right. the timeline is is long, longer than we want. So Kip, um, I would like you to uh, think about, and I'd like the, I mean, if the best rest of the board is in agreement of giving the language of when the uh, building maintenance and reserve fund was set up to Abigail and have her review what she thinks is the flexibility around use of what was done when that set reserve fund was set up. Sean, just a second. May I, and, uh, and, um, uh, and then at the next board meeting, we have a definition of what we can and cannot do because you're talking about prospectively into next year's fiscal year budget. Is that not correct? On yes. yes. Sorry, Sean, go ahead, please. No, oh, thank you. Um, I have a really quick question about this automated return system and, uh, you know, making sure, I mean, it sounds interesting, but I'd, I'd like to be sure it's not solving a problem that doesn't exist. Um, and knowing that things like that can be finicky uh, and, and, you know, sometimes, <laughs> the staffing required to maintain and keep something like that going can be beyond what was needed in the first place. So I, I would be interested to know uh, from some other facility that, that has this system, what the real operating costs are and kind of what the reliability is and, and things like that. Um, and I, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that or, or can speak to that right you know, now. Rick and Stella and I, touched on the need to find that out this week. So that's something that between now and February, when this gets presented formally, I guess, um, there'll be more information that we'll have. Thank you. I just wanted, I think it's great to do something with the door counters. I mean, one of the things I noticed in the statistics, which I chose not to belabor given all the variables is the numbers of people in the building are at half even during the three months when we thought COVID was over which <laughs> which I don't even remember anymore um, so to me the idea of getting people back into the building at some point and understanding what brings people in and when they come all of those things are important to have a better sense of um, and 
and I encourage you to continue to think about ways we can have a better sense of what what that looks like and and it's what all, we need to help you do that. So it's all anecdotal somewhat, I guess. Yeah. And so it'd be nice is, to be firmer when, when there is um, in building programming. Um, I think you see greater numbers of people in the building in general. Um, and I know that's been the case at Alta. When you see some increases, it's because Eva's had some in building or in in courtyard uh, programs there and the numbers jump up quite a bit. Um, yeah, I mean, the door, I like I like- if the, we can find a way to get back to in building programming where we, we can have more than 10 people or 20 people in the auditorium, um, it would be helpful. Um, figuring well, out how after school is going to work uh, again, um, you'll see, see the numbers jump. Um, but. Well, and then I think like the door counter is, is the beginning of that, you know, where you, my kids can go in and out of that door 50 times. Wow. So, you know, yeah. they may not, we may not want to count them that way. So be, being able to, to have better statistics right. and in the long run, it would help your staffing too, in the idea that, okay, you know, for a year on Tuesday mornings, no one comes in here before 10. So right. what can we do from eight to 10 that without, maybe we're not open. Maybe we right. have uh, a really, a children's program that takes over the entire building. You know, it would allow for some creativity to be able to understand those aspects better. It um, would have been more helpful for when we decided to reopen until 7 p.m. Is, is that an appropriate hour? Should it have been eight o'clock? Should it be? Right. Should it have stayed at six o'clock? We don't have anything other than some manual statistics that staff recorded, you know, for a period of a time two or three years ago. <laughs> right. And it may be that it's just Wednesdays and Thursdays or something. So all of that, given the pressures we're facing um, with staff and then with having people open, I mean, part of it, I think, is people remembering the building is there. You know, I think people have we've all gone into our homes and haven't come out. So there will be some encouragement, but it's also just understanding what the, what the best, yeah. what the best use of that is too. So. Yeah. So to I'm, answer the question, Peter, I will work with uh, Abigail to, to get the real definition. Of this. Yeah. I, 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 oh, my, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, Grace, go ahead. I'm sorry, excuse me. Once you get that answer from um, Abigail, if she says that the items on the, the plan, you know, if, if we can go ahead and use that on these items that are in orange on the plan, would you then bring those back and we can start on those right away? Well, um, that, that, I, I would say the items in orange for sure um, all probably fall within the the definition that we've okay. set and can be done at any time. Right. Um, since we have the funding, we don't need to wait till July to start oh. this. Right. And it's so really the, the question is the items in green. Right. So do you need approval to start on these items in orange? Well, I I, I think given the, the cost of some of those, the, we'll have to do a lot of board approval and RFPs and things like not, that. We're not there yet, timing-wise, Grace. In, individually, so you'll, okay, yeah. I got it. Yeah. Um, shall we move on to the operating budget uh, assumptions for the upcoming fiscal year? Sure, that'll be very quick. <laughs> we, I just so far have a draft of what the commissioner's um, mm -hmm budget guidance is that was included in your packet has a date of January 24th. So I don't know if Commissioner Barron knows if it's going to change much. Um, I tried watching the meeting in recording, but it's very difficult to hear the meeting. <laughs> so I don't know if the guidance changed from what was presented on Tuesday or not. Um, so anyway, you, you have seen the guidance. Um, the Budgeting will be different this year in that um, 
the county has purchased budgeting software called OpenGov, and we will be receiving, Stella and I will get training on that software tomorrow. Um, so a lot of what the work we had to do on our front end, uh, like salaries and all the expenses related to wages uh, will be preloaded um, by the clerk's office. Um, and it will include um, the uh, recently uh, implemented sa new salary plan. Um, I believe there was discussion of whether or not there would be another two and a half percent raise um, starting in July. And I believe the clerk's office will also be, pre be presenting um, that data as well. So we don't have to worry about any of the salary assumptions for us. We're not looking at adding any new positions. Uh, we would just like to fill the ones we have. <laughs> yes. um, and so the rest of the guidance is, is you know, be conservative in our budgeting. Um, and so once we understand the software and there's some statistics that I don't have yet that usually come out in early February, um, like the cost of um, library books and materials. And I expect, given the, everything else is going up 8 to 10%, we could probably anticipate books uh, and library materials increasing in cost. So there will be some budget assumptions that include uh, consideration of inflation. Well, to the extent that you need additional hands um, in this process, then we can be help. Any one of us can be helpful. Please don't you, be shy. You're <laughs> you're on speed dial for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so there, we will have a formal presentation for the board ready in advance of the February meeting. So you'll have ample time to look at everything and, and look at quest, formulate questions for us. Okay. Are there any other? Questions for Kip on this section? All right, board updates. Uh, Grace, Strategic Planning Committee, subcommittee. Okay, um, <clears throat> wrote a summary for your packets. Uh, <clears throat> I think by now you know that we've agreed to follow the Strategic Planning for Public Library Books by Joe Fuller, Joy Fuller, and that's uh, a public Library Association um, published book. And it's very comprehensive and it's very methodical and it provides worksheets and good guidance throughout. So we're following a good plan. You have some examples of that book in the, in the, um, in the handout or the information that I put on the uh, Dropbox. Um, to date, made a good progress in uh, proposing the strategic planning team, um, which is comprised of library stakeholders. And our first cut at that yielded um, 11 potential strategic planning team members. But I believe that we want to have a discussion about one additional member today, and maybe this would be a good time to do that, Kip. Sure. Um, in reading through the handbook that we ha have decided to follow and looking at what other libraries who have recently gone through strategic planning, they've all, the, the, the workbook recommends and all of the other committees for the most part that I've looked at have included uh, a BIPOC member of the community, um, BIPOC being Black, Indigenous, people of color, um, as to in, help ensure that the, the strategic plan really focuses on uh, how, how to better serve the underserved in the past. So I, I would like to recommend that the um, planning committee include a, a member from the community. Um, the, I know that also we will have an advisory committee um, and those, the members of those of the advisory committee will be from the community. And I think they will provide a lot of important uh, guidance to us 
but they won't be a decision maker. And I think it's important to have someone on the team, the plan, actual planning team. I would just note that given the amount of effort that's gonna be required in terms of time commitment, um, I would love to start off with somebody on the planning team from the community uh, who is representing BIPOC, but it may be necessary to, as a fallback, to have them on the advisory committee, just give, or well, whoever, just because of the commitment of time. It's, it's a lot to ask for um, non-library affiliated volunteers. We could consider paying them. Well, we good. <laughs> Maybe the foundation would be up for it or um, they, they did set aside money uh, funds to help with the strategic planning expenses. So that is something we could look at. Um, Grace, what are you seeking from the board today? OK, so in addition to the planning team, which um, Kip, I guess you've got go ahead to look at a BIPOC member. Mm -hmm. um, there will also be an advisory uh, board uh, comprised of community members, experts, and that's gonna be as broad as possible. <clears throat> um, and then I just want to point out that <clears throat> um, Kip has noted that we certainly will be looking for consultant expertise on specific subjects. Um, we're not talking about a consultant to do the overall planning process. We're gonna follow the the uh, book, but uh, to help us with specific topics and Kip has some um, contacts and potential that, that that will happen. And so we will be using consultants in that capacity. And I just wanna point out one more time that this committee, when it takes off and work gets started, it's an administrative job that really needs administrative support and Kip can't do that. And, and you know none of us can do that. So that needing administrative assistance is key to getting going with this team. And I don't wanna bog the team down and get off to a bad start without that. So we might need to do some pretty creative thinking on how to do that as we talked about before. So for today, our next steps are um, the initial committee requests authority to establish the strategic planning team as outlined here and discussed here today. And I don't think that's, is that a formal vote or do we just all agree that we've reviewed it and we carry on with that? Well, I'd actually like the board to, to bless. I mean, we're asking them a lot. Um, we uh, I, Just to remind everybody, we are only having two board members on the strategic planning committee because having a third would be an official meeting every time we sat down and met. Um, so I would like the sense of the board that uh, having Grace and me be those, those representatives and that we can get this planning team appointed in the next few weeks, uh, which is giving Kip the ability to talk with staff and, uh, and also getting the friends and foundation and effort going on the BIPOC side as well. I would love your blessings to do that if, uh, if I may. It may be belt and suspenders, but um, I, would I would open the floor to anybody who has comments, questions, or concerns about it. Wow. Well, I guess I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a little fuzzy about what you want us to do, Peter. I, I think we're all on board with this, and we're obviously waiting for the committee to start the work to see, you know, but do you feel we need a formal vote, or can we just... Um... I guess we can have a discussion. Are you guys comfortable with Grace and me and the planning team? Uh, setting setting down with Kip to get the planning team established and uh, and going forward and reporting back at the next board meeting with who those members are. I am. I am. Yeah, I am okay. too. We don't need I a mean, vote. We don't need a vote. I, 
I don't think we need to vote. And I think we all anticipate that we are going to have a lot of reporting on this subject. So you I'm not concerned. It. <laughs> you it. Well, Dale, yeah. that leads us into our next topic. And that is for a starting point, we have outlined in the, the Dropbox handout, um, the approval milestones for the board. Uh -huh. and the advisory team and the planning team. That's a start as to where we will be coming for formal approval from the board, those items, and we will be adding to those as we go. But um, as you can see, there's quite a few touch points that the board gets approval there. And so I guess we could handle that in the same way we just handled the planning team establishment and say, does everyone, um, does any is there any discussion on those approval milestones at this point, or can we just proceed with those as the book outlines? Well, would, Grace, I have a question about that. Wouldn't we want to um, get the committee input on that and make sure that, in terms of their abilities to participate in their timeline, that that all of that is going to flow for them also? I mean, don't we kind of have a missing piece about that? Yes, we do. I mean, I, Grace, I think you're you're absolutely right. These are general milestones. It's not a specific time frame attached to it. Um, it's just the uh, that that worksheet is really to to lay out where uh, who's got the authority to approve things, and most of the things come back to the board, library board. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. It's, it's less of a milestone and most and more of a checklist of authority and where it lies. Right. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. And yes, that that will become definitely more mature as we go. And we'll just finish that chart. So maybe we don't need to do anything else with that today. Just be aware of it. Uh -huh. Okay. And then um, so we'll take the next steps necessary to transition to the strategic planning team. Um, Kip, I believe we've got one exercise to do in that arena, and that is to compile the recommended team and look at the value added they each bring and the and make sure that we we don't have any gaps. That right? is correct. And then that and then you talk to the planning team and get their commitment to invite invite them and join us. And then the last item on strategic planning for today is um, at noon today, uh, Kip, Peter, and I will be ten attending a webinar with the author of the strategic planning for public libraries book. And it, it's a big book and it needs someone to explain. So <laughs> she's going to explain how she put that book together, the framework and the approach so that we're all kind of understanding that next layer. And she's going to help us navigate the book for various uses. And in our case, that various use is a more rural, smaller library. And so we'll be looking for guidance on that. And last but not least, she's going to tell us about the plan to plan process, which we're part way into, but that might come up with other things that we need to do before the next board meeting. So that's where we're going from here. It's a good start. We're, we're on our way. Thank you, Grace, very much. Are there any other questions for Grace? Yeah, Dale. You know, I just like to make a suggestion because I think Grace is right on point about the administrative assistant type tasks that are involved with this. And I know that we um, have an extraordinarily talented group of friends at our library and that they have not been able to participate to a degree that they would normally be because of the pandemic. And I am wondering if we can't reach out and see if there wouldn't be one or maybe two per people who might be interested in trying to help us with some of that on a volunteer basis to get this thing off the ground. That's a very nice suggestion, Dale. We will. I know we have. I know we have that talent there. It's really a matter of, you know, would people be comfortable? How much of it are you going to do in person? I'm assuming a lot of it will be on Zoom just because of the logistics. And so it might very well be a, a good option. That's a very good suggestion. Thank you. Thanks, Dale. 
Um, well, Dale, next item is yours. It's a diversity subcommittee charter and update. Right. Um, Kip and I had a discussion and he was going to follow through on one of the trainings. Uh, Kip, do you wanna do that first? Sure. Um, I just got the information that I needed yesterday. <laughs> so this, I, I'm, good, I'm looking at the email as I read it to you. Um, so I reached out, well, Dale did, and then I followed up uh, with, with Cedar over at Cultivatability about providing uh, disability awareness training for library staff and the various library affiliated boards and whomever else we may want to invite. Um, we looked at whether or not this training would be done in person or virtual via Zoom. Um, it would not be able to be held in person until probably late March, which we start getting into spring break. Um, so I don't, I, it's pushing it out a lot. So we, we explored the Zoom option and um, the trainer is in Portland and she provided me with a number of dates. Um, one of them being Thursday, February 17th which is the next date of the library board meeting. Um, and Thursdays also tend to be the day where we have the most staff working. Um, the training is approximately an hour and 15 minutes. Um, and so I have two options that I'd like to present to the board for doing that. I would recommend that we do it on Thursday, February 17th. So we know the library board is likely available. Um, if we, well, if we do it on the 17th, I would propose that we do it as a brown bag lunch. Um, now that we're open until seven o'clock, we have a number of staff who would not be on site at 8.30 when we would normally do a training. And I think this is the kind of training you want as many people participating live as possible. Um, so I would recommend if we do it on the Fed on February 17th, we would have to close the library from 12 to 1 30. Um, and we would have a majority of staff working that day. Um, and at that time of day, um, if we don't want to do a closing from 12 to 1 30. We could look at other Thursdays in the month of February. Um, we would still need to close the library from 9 to 10 uh, to cover uh, the timing of the training. Um, and I think the board did decide last month that this was an important training to, um, to undertake. Dale? Well, uh, Kip. Um, will that include a Zoom option for people to attend? Yes, it, the, it would be recorded and made accessible to staff who are not working that day and, and board members who might not be able to participate uh, for up to 30 days to watch. And I do understand that, but but um, but I mean, as it's as we do the first go round, it would also be it available. It would also be on Zoom. Zoom. Yes. Yeah. It, it, yes. Okay. I just want to make sure that we're going to do the the live pre, live presentation, for lack of a better word, and then we would have further access. Yes. If we did not do it in, if we did opted to go in to late March uh, and do it in person, it would just be whoever's in attendance. Let me oh, let me no, um, cut through this a little bit, if at great risk of offending anybody. Uh, Kip, it's your recommendation, if I hear through your willingness to give us lots of options, but your recommendation is that we held this to get the most staff in person from 12 to 1.30 on Thursday, February 17th, which also coincides with our board meeting. Is that yes. correct? Yes. All right. Um, so I, should, should, I mentioned it earlier, um, foundation funds that I have access to will be paying for the training and I do need to continue to appreciate the library staff. So we would also use some foundation funds to provide lunch for staff that day. 
or all participants that day. Um, would you be willing to open this up to other people in the county uh, departments if uh, if they were interested, or does that make it a zoo? The well, we I don't know. I would have to talk to there. There were some restrictions on how many people could participate, so I don't know um, if that's the case for Zoom or not. Right. Um, it, it's up to 50 people if it's in person, and then it starts to get into either a second training or a higher cost. Um, I don't know if that's the case with the Zoom, and it doesn't say in this email. Uh, I, for one, I would you know, like to open it up to as many people as we could. I think that'd be good. Um, I, for one, don't, uh, if, you're, if that's your recommendation, I don't want to second guess your recommendation as to time. It does mean that we'd have to close a library for an hour and a half. Um, what's the sense of the board on going with Kip's recommendation for Thursday, February 17th from 12 to 1.30? Is everybody all right with that? I'm good. I see Grace, I see Nina, Sean, Dale, are you okay with that? Yeah. All right. Um, may I have a motion to close the library on Thursday, February 17th from 12 to 1.30 to have diversity training uh, for library, staff, board, and affiliated board organizations, affiliated library organizations. I make that motion. <laughs> I'll second. Do I have any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. There you go, Kip. Thank you. Uh, Dale, there's a charter, I think, that you and I have worked on. Do you want to, well, I'll just ask anybody. Dale, Dale was very, very um, good about keeping this short and sweet. And uh, she allowed me graciously to edit slightly. And then she did a great job of cleaning up my non mellifluous prose. So um, we have a charter for the this uh, uh, our group. Uh, are there any? I will take any comments on that charter. Boy, Dale, yeah, good, good job. Um, and and I'd just like to uh, make a short, uh, uh, if that's fine with everybody, that's good. Um, a short. Um, I tried to get in touch with the DEI group, who is also hopefully going to provide us with the training. And their board was going to have a meeting the middle of this month and discuss what they could do for us. And I have tried over the last several days to find out if they've done that yet. And I could not get any further information. They did tell me they would get in touch with me when that happened. So I'm assuming it probably hasn't happened. And I will hopefully have more information uh, soon on that, but that's as far as I've gotten with the with the other potential training. Thank you. Do we have to? Uh, I guess we have to approve the charter. Do we not? Sure. I All right. Don't know the answer for sure. I don't know for sure, but why don't we just do it and then it's done? If and if we didn't need to do it, it doesn't make. I mean, it's not going to change things then. Um, I'll, I'll make a motion, Peter, to approve the charter as uh, as offered here today. Thank you, Dale. I will second that. Do I have any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, IT subcommittee. Like a uh, creaky old steamship, the IT <laughs> subcommittee is getting <laughs> underway again um, with the uh, conclusion of the holidays and some last minute work travel I had to undertake last week uh, that has slipped a little bit. Um, but uh, I intend to reach out to the core group uh, with whom we originally worked and uh, uh, in particular Grace and get that charter hashed out she had some some questions about the language uh and then we can proceed on that thanks sean you must be coal fired steam ship <laughs> I, I feel i feel like i am some days <laughs> so um 
Sean, as we um, look at a charter for the IT subcommittee and talk about that further, um, one thing that we might want to evaluate is whether or not we should just roll that under into the strategic planning process, the IT, IT planning included in that. Um, do you think that's a possibility or? Uh, you know, I feel, like, I, I feel like there are, I mean, yes, is the short answer, but I also feel like there are enough issues both uh, in the short term and sort of long-term projections that, that probably deserve to stand on their own. Okay. Um, and, and I am happy to, to proceed with that, that process uh, broken out. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. Uh, we actually covered the housing task force reestablish earlier. Uh, so we're going to move on to matters from board members, uh, library staff and supporting organizations. I do have a couple of uh, matters for that I wanna bring up, but does anybody else have any matters? Let's hear what your matters are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, one of the things that I have just thought about a little bit, I have not had the chance to talk with the board, nor KIPP, nor uh, especially our new uh, representative from the BOCC, but I think it's time having had two meetings under our belt face to face with the BOCC that involves a lot of their time, uh, allocating time to us and, allocate, and our allocating time to them about whether A, this is working, and if it's, if it's not working to tweak it, and also do we need to meet quarterly as opposed to write a report quarterly and maybe move to a, a, a different schedule. But I don't have a view on it. I think it's just a time to having a couple of meetings under our belt to uh, touch base uh, through our liaison. So I'm putting them on the spot and I'm not asking for a response, Mark. Um, to see what the BOCC thinks about what we're doing. Um, I would do the same thing with the tri-board. Um, I think that's a little bit different because the tri-board is involved in a lot of different aspects of the library. Um, and I, I feel for one that it is, it is working well. And, and I have not heard from talking with either uh, Lori Clark Erickson or and any of anyone else from her group or from Maggie or Amy that they see any need to change things right now. But that's one of my matters. I just wanted to say that's what I'm thinking about. Um, and I will come back at the next meeting with a uh, report uh, from my discussions with whomever our board liaison to the BOC from the BOCC would like me to talk with. Um, the second matter is uh, I want to, uh, I have been very concerned about um, the fire hose that uh, our library director and his staff have been uh, drinking from in terms of the number of projects and the number of activities uh, that they are doing to enhance library services, to try and find staffing, to work on housing, to work on a strategic plan, and have looked at the amount of preparation that goes into just reporting to us, which is about an eight day out of every four weeks calendar uh, for our meetings. Um, I, as a, I want to understand um, what, it would be to change our, the, the, I want to just know what the facts are to change our bylaws, to go to fewer numbers of meetings a year. And I want the okay from our board to at least have a conversation with um, uh, our, with the county attorney's office and with KIPP about the ability and will it, what, what the facts are behind it before I bring it to the board for a discussion item, but I don't think it's fair to the board for me to be doing that behind anybody's back uh, without the board's understanding that I wanna go down this path, at least to investigate what the facts are. 
so you're looking at going to our current formal no. board majority of contents going to every other month six I, meetings I don't have months. a proposal to make I want to see if we I'm concerned that spending eight days out of every 30 days on average um, in and around preparing for board meetings, if we can't be more sufficient, uh, efficient than that and have longer but more, uh, more infrequent meetings, um, I just wanna understand, uh, I, know it's, I know the bylaws are fairly, um, uh, they're not extensive, but I'd like to have the, uh, the uh, ability to have a conversation with Abigail to understand what um, practice is and at least come to the board meeting next month with either nothing because we can't do it or just a better understanding of what, the, what, the, what that is and then getting a better sense from uh, Kip so that we could have a discussion about whether this is something that we want to entertain. Yes, Dale. Um, I guess I would. Uh, I would like to say that I'm not sure having fewer meetings is the answer because I don't know that with fewer meetings if it would generate any less work because then there's a certain amount of catch up that you have to do for the time that you didn't have the meeting. Um, I think the board oversight is important uh, on a number of levels particularly financially, that's obviously a big charter of ours from the state. Um, well, we, and, have, we would have to meet, uh, we'd have to have a voucher meeting every month. Yes, uh, and, I, and I also think maybe we should be looking at another alternative, which is to streamline the meetings we're having um, and see if there is a way to, uh, to make them, the existing meetings more efficient. Um, I do well, think- the, I'm sorry, Dale, with all due respect, I really, I, I, I would love to be able, if this is a non-starter from the legal standpoint, then I don't want to even have any discussion about it because it's a non-starter. I would love to have an in-depth conversation at the next board meeting, if it's a starter, and I would bring something specific to you all. Um, I don't mean to cut you off, your opinions are very important, but I think we're having a discussion that I would anticipate next month. Well, and I think that's fine, Peter, but I don't think there's a reason we can't talk about the efficiency of board meetings at any time, quite frankly. No, no, Although I, I, I am not prepared to do that today. No, I'm but, not. Um, so I get what you're talking about, but I don't want us to just limit ourselves in terms of how we look at this. That's all I'm saying. I, I understand that. I'm just trying to right now understand what our options are. Sean. Would it make sense to think about uh, kind of as a transition step, uh, looking toward reducing KIPP's workload, uh, maybe making the director's report a quarterly thing. Uh, and, and would that take any kind of legal review to make that change um, and, and continue with the monthly board meeting in a streamlined fashion with, with the understanding that, you know, every quarter we'd have a longer one to uh, to get that report well i i i am um i think it's a very good suggestion i, I just want to the okay this is what my thought it has been and i have not really talked at great length with anybody about it i just wanted to inform the board this is what i'm thinking about and unless i think everything's on the table i'm just my main concern is Kip's workload and how we can help him spend more time on reporting to the board and board oversight is critical for our board's perspective. But I think that um, things that we can do to make more efficient his time in getting these meetings done and also more attractive for volunteers to serve on this board uh, is appropriate. Um, I see uh, uh, Mark Barron has his hand up. Uh, Mark, would you like to make a comment, please? Yes, but not on this topic. I have to run to a meeting. I'm in Utah for an equipment repair, and my appointment is in 15 minutes. But I wanted to leave a few thoughts, if that's okay, before I leave. Thank you for allowing me to attend. Um, 
a very, very involved board. You have a lot of committees and a lot of issues on the table. CAP Energy Mitigation Funds or Blue Coop. And uh, so um, ask for more than you think you can get. Secondly, <laughs> Energy Conservation Works. Energy Conservation Works also has some public spent money that you can tap into. Phil Cameron, if you don't have his contact, let me know. Okay. And I just wanted to speak to the housing and the staffing challenges, which are ongoing, have been ongoing, have really accelerated this last couple of years and leave you with a couple of thoughts before you start digging into trying to dig into your own parking lot, which probably has a higher and better use down the road. Um, I just calculated the list of housing units, 478 housing units, 196 of them have been built. So you can see you have a heck of a lot of housing units that are coming online. That does not include the opportunity that may come out of North South Park neighborhood planning, particularly with the new Trust for Public Lands Gill partnership. And so if you have a housing task force, I would highly recommend you focus some energy on North South Park and uh, you will probably get a better bang for your buck and preserve your precious parking lot for higher, higher needs than housing. I think that partnering in our community has always paid dividends. And as desperate as each organization feels about their own uh, recruitment challenges, which are very real, um, still partnering in our community generally gets um, higher results for all of us. So I have to run to this meeting. I just wanted to leave you with those thoughts and say thank you. I'm around if anybody has any questions. And uh, Abigail, I'll call you later today. And, and Mark, I'll get on your schedule at some point in time to talk to you about the. That'd be great. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Dale, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to, I really don't mean to squash you. You, you were, you were actually, you I, 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 that's my intent is just to make things more efficient and, and easier on, uh, on KIPP. And I'm just looking for what all of our options are. And uh, also with the idea of, are there things that are structural about our board that can also be easier to attract board, board, board candidates? as well and i'm for all of that <laughs> so we're in heated agreement i yes I, yes we are okay. we are all right so kip it would be really good if when we come to that next week meeting if you could if you can just in a, a broad brush way break down what are the most onerous things to you about preparing for these meetings so we could get it down to, you know, maybe we need to just tailor the agenda like Dale is suggesting. And yeah, if we don't really have a feel for what causes your organization to do the most work for a board meeting. If you could bring that to us, that would be helpful too. Yeah, and I think the, the other issue there is to the extent that we're lacking one person in an administrative assistant, does that yes. materially, part of the problem. Does that materially change things? Because I know you guys are having to do a lot that you normally Everything. do. Yeah. All right. Are there any other board matters? Thank you. Um, vouchers. Sean. I have uh, reviewed and signed all of the vouchers. Everything looked great uh, and would uh, move to uh, approve them. There are, I, would, I would move to uh, approve the payment of the library vouchers. I will second your motion. Um, any discussion? I will just add that next month, Sean, you only have to sign your name once on everything. <laughs> we will no longer be printing checks. So I am I am prepared for that uh, <laughs> for that switch. <laughs> all, all, all in favor say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Thank you. Um, we are going to adjourn uh, and move into an executive session on our uh, library board advanced planning calendar. Uh, this is a, uh, on it you'll see that there is a library director review. This is what the executive session is about. So I would move to uh, move into, I would make a motion to move into executive session. 
I'll second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, I will stop the, I will pause the recording. Maybe. And I will admit those who are still in the waiting room. Okay. We are. Um, we have come out of the executive session. There was no action that was taken. Um, I would take a motion to adjourn the Teton County Library Board meeting. I would so move. I will second that. All in fa any discussion? All in favor say aye, please. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much. Okay, I'll get you the recording as soon as I can, Dale. Thank you. And I'll see Grace and Peter online in an hour and a half. Yep. Thanks for very taking much. this on, Dale. No problem. Abigail, um, may I give you